Today we're going to be doing an installation guide on the Mute Clip Double and Mute Clip Single system at Acoustics Testing Facility. We're going to take the acoustic plasterboard off this side and then add the Mute Clip and channel, then a single layer of acoustic board for the Mute Clip Single system, and then a layer of tech sound and a second layer of acoustic plasterboard for the Mute Clip Double system. Now we're going to talk through the install of a stud frame. At the moment we've got the stud frame installed because this is part of our test rig but if you're going to install a stud frame within your property you want to make sure it's if you're treating an existing party wall you want the stud frame to be off that party wall and not fixed into the party wall you do that by fixing the perimeter into the adjacent walls floor and ceiling with an isolation strip f5 separating them you can then continue to add your uprights at 600 millimeter centers to put your mineral wool in and you want to add some noggins in for um, strength. So the reason we use acoustic mineral wool between the studs is if you have just plasterboard either side of a stud with no acoustic mineral wool, the sound will resonate within that cavity. When it comes to soundproofing, we recommend the 60 kilo per cubic meter mineral wool within that cavity. So when it comes to installing the acoustic mineral wool, the standard size the slabs come in is 1200mm by 600mm. This width here from the centre to the centre of the stud is 600mm in this case. Now that means the gap is about 580 to 560mm. So the mineral wool may need shaving off slightly, but it does want to be slightly wider than the gap you have, so then it can be friction held within the aperture. We're now ready to install the mute clip isolation mount onto the stud frame. So it's got dual impedance isolation. So there's two different densities of rubber there. There's the lower density in the middle to reduce as much vibrations coming through as possible. And then the higher density outer layer to give it a bit more stability because we're gonna be adding a lot of weight to this wall. It's got one fixing through the middle to minimize points of contact and the distance between that fixing point and the connection of the channel is maximized to reduce those transfers of vibrations further. Marking out the mute clips is the next stage on the wall. We're going to measure up from the bottom and we're gonna start with the bottom channel. The channel at the bottom wants to be no further than 100 millimeters from the base and that's the same with your top channel, no further than 100 millimeters from the top. Now your second channel will be 600 millimetres from the floor, third 1200 millimetres from the floor, so on 600 mil apart until you hit that top channel. The clips are then in the diamond formation. So in this instance we're going to number our studs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now on that first channel, it's an odd number, so we're going to hit all the odd numbered studs. One, three, five, and seven. Now something to remember is you always need a clip at the end of the channel. So the even channels are going to go one, two, four, six, seven. Again, odd, odd number studs, even, even number studs. You then get a diamond formation across the wall which gives you an even distribution of the clips. Now there's a range of reasons why you do this. One of the reasons is if you put your clips at 1200 millimeters centers across and don't have any clips on this stud, that can flex and you can have issues with plaster cracking over time and it can be quite hard to plaster as well. When you have a clip halfway across here, multiple times up the wall, it reduces that flex in the wall, which reduces the chance of that plaster cracking. Line the fixing up, the screw up, with the centre of the stud. Now you want to screw it in, so you can turn it, but not spin it. So we've now fitted the mute clips to the stud frame. We're now ready to fit the mute clip channels into the mute clips. Simply sit the bottom of the channel into the bottom of the clips. If you squeeze either side of the clip, you'll pop it into the clip there. 
Now the channels come as standard as a 1.85 meter length. We also do a 1.5 and a 2.4 meter length. Different sizes for different size jobs really. We've got the first channels into the clips here. We're now going to put another channel to fill this length here. Now I'm just going to measure what length I need to join onto here. So I'm going to make sure I've got a 15 centimeter overlap on the channel here. 1350 at least to overlap on this here. So we're going to measure off that 1350. And then you're ready to cut it with a pair of tin snips. Now I've got some safety gloves on because it can be sharp. Cut the shoulders either side. And you're going to come up it. Then bend it. Get through that. You'll see then this is at a slight angle. If you just overlap it onto the other channel. Give it a few taps. That is then ready to join onto the other channel. Squeeze either side again. And that's then ready to join here. And use four self drilling fixings into the shoulders of the channel to fix the two together. We're now going to fix the acoustic plasterboard to the channels. We're going to use some packers around the perimeter because you want to leave up to a 5mm gap. In this case we're going to be using a 1.5mm packer. We'll lay them down on the floor, sit the acoustic plasterboard on top of them and then fix it into the channels. Because it's a 15mm acoustic board we're going to be using a 32mm drywall self-tapping screw straight through the plasterboard into the channels. Continue across five fixings across. You'll feel when you hit a channel behind, you'll get a bit of resistance and push through. Make sure you get quite close to the edge to limit movement within the boards. And continue it on every channel. A little tip on this, mark out where your channel is on the wall so you can track where your fixings are going to be it's sometimes hard to keep track of where your channel is when the board covers the channel acoustic sealant is going to go around the perimeter sealing any gaps if you do have any gaps between the acoustic plasterboards you want to make sure they're well sealed as well and the same with the screw heads if necessary so now we're going to seal that up with the acoustic and intumescent AC95 sealant. It's a bit heavier than your standard sealant. It also doesn't set hard. So that's the acoustic part and the intumescent means it'll expand under heat. TechSound is next to be fitted on the wall. This is the TechSound SY70. That's seven kilos a square meter. So it is very heavy. Ideally you have two people install this. It does come in two other weights. There's the SY50 which is five kilos a square meter, and S100, which is 10 kilos a square meter as well. All three are self-adhesive, so they can stick straight onto the wall. TechSound is a vibration dampening membrane. It's called a viscoelastic material. It absorbs vibrations from any surface you apply it to, but it also adds the mass, which is really, really important. The more decoupled mass you have, the higher the partition is going to perform at. Now ready to fit the final layer of acoustic plasterboard. Whilst we're fitting the second layer of acoustic boards, you want to remember where the channels are going up the wall. Also what we're going to do is we're going to use a half board to start with on this side and then full boards going forward. And that's to stagger the joins from the first layer to give a best airtight seal. So we've given you the full guide on how to install this system. 
If you've got any questions, just give us a call or email us. So you can email us at sales at acoustic.com. Call us 01937 588 Check out our Trust Pilot. We've got loads and loads of reviews of people installing this particular system. We've got an extensive library of test data. If you're looking to pass Part E regulations, this system is a great system to do that. If you've got any questions at all regarding the installation, performance or the product data for each individual material, do let us know and we'll be happy to help.